Um, I have a special guest joining me in a few minutes to talk about hormones because she's an expert <laughs> in um, experiencing hormone shifts herself and helping, gosh, hundreds, 300, 400 people probably through this process. So um, when I've talked to her before about hormones and she told me her story, I wanted her to share it. And then I have my own hormone story I want to share. But I think it's really important to talk about what's normal with hormones because hormones for ladies, they change. Like our hormones go up and down throughout the day, throughout the cycle. But there are some normal things we're supposed to feel. And then there are some things that are kind of abnormal and more painful. Uh, I'm going to add her to this and see if that works. Um, she's hanging out waiting to be, to be added. Um, but we're not supposed to be super miserable and we're not supposed to feel terrible during our monthly cycles and then later in life when we have our, oh good, I'll bring her on camera. Let's see if I can add her in. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Me? I was just saying that we're not supposed to feel terrible during our monthly cycles. And then later in life, when we go through our changes through perimenopause and menopause, we're not supposed to feel like life altering, basically with everything, with our natural supplementation. We're, the reason we supplement is to make us feel good. We're not supposed to feel terrible ever, really, right? Yeah, I know. I know. We're not supposed to. I think that we, we swing. We, some things feel really terrible and we think that it's normal. And I'm like, oh, no, no, you can feel so much better. Other times it's the opposite. People think I shouldn't feel anything at all. I'm like, oh, no, no, you are going through something, right. you know, but it's, it that's certainly true. shouldn't be a big deal, or, you know, true. so. That's true. Um, okay, so tell me your story real quick about hormones and how you have experienced hormones in a bad way, in a negative way, in a more severe way, and then how you're experiencing hormones now. And then, so you want me to be specific about like hot yeah. flashes? Yeah, like, yeah. That's the, that part of it? Okay. Three um, people who reached out to me recently talking about how they're having menopause symptoms early in their 30s, which I think is your story exactly. And so I'd love to hear your story yep. for them. You bet. Okay. Happy to share. Um, so for me, I went into menopause at 33 and I just thought that it was just super, super bad luck. I was told that it was genetic. Um, we had, you know, when I did get married and we tried fertility treatments, the results came back. Honestly, it said less than 0% chance of fertility. It was so sad. Um, when I began to learn finally about natural healing and underlying root causes, I had this awesome doctor who basically said, your body does not want to be in menopause right now. Like it didn't want to start it at 33. It's not right. And she taught me about insulin and what a dominant hormone means, what that is, how all other hormones copy it and mimic that, which is what insulin is our dominant hormone. Um, and that my body did not want to be in menopause. She had a lot of confidence that I could absolutely have children, have fertility, not have hot flashes so young, all that stuff. So of course I'm like scratching my head, like, is this for real? Um, I didn't really have any other way to go because I had tried everything else for so long anyway. So I'm kind of like throw my hands up. Sure. I'll try. Maybe you're right. Um, not a lot of hope though. So I've experienced hot flashes and when the kind of hot flashes I had, especially so young, um, it was really, really bad. Part of my fertility treatments, they had to put me in a more extreme forced menopause. Those were really, really bad. So if anybody out there is complaining of hot flashes and then all the other things that go along with it, I feel you, I hate them. I may have said a lot of swear words, like it was not <laughs> very fun. Um, I'm also on the other end of it. I'm 48 years old now. I did go on to have two children. My period completely resumed. I'm not saying that that's the case for everybody. I'm just telling my story because I was a very extreme case in the negative and I reversed. So that should give hope to people in natural healing and balancing our underlying root causes. So because I experienced menopause young, and then now at 48, I'm in what's called perimenopause, um, where you do still have some fertility, you still have a healthy cycle, but your body's kind of amping up to go into what will be full blown menopause. Perimenopause can go five years, can go 10 years. Um, there are people who have pre healthy pregnancies during perimenopause. It's just the early stages. You guys can research that, you know, on your own. Um, but hot flashes are, you know, in perimenopause as well. And then, of course, in full-blown menopause. So I want to talk about them really quickly because balancing your hormones, balancing your underlying root causes, taking a fully methylated multivitamin, especially one 
like X Factor Plus um, that specifically targets, oh my gosh, Tori, what's it called? Uh, I'm forgetting the nutrients. Phenols. Thank you. Oh my gosh, tip my tongue, polyphenols. Um, when you, polyphenols absolutely positively affect these horrible hot flashes and perimenopausal symptoms. Um, so of course, you know, all of that, I would say balance root causes, balance root causes like all the day long. But I also want to talk about hot flashes and hormones because they're also like, they're not the devil. They're not meant to be completely avoided, um, but they're also not meant to be excruciating and so uncomfortable. So I'm really glad that Tori wanted to talk specifically about this topic. It really is a topic all its own and deserves its own airtime. So hot flashes, I get them sometimes. They are no big deal. They're not like they were. Let me describe what they were. It was described to me one time, and I'm stealing this, that it's like driving through Arizona with no air conditioning and then turning on the heat full blast in the car, okay? I'm sure you're going to get comments, <laughs> Tori. I'm sorry. What is that funny? Uh, that people like will be like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, those are bad. You don't have to have that that's happen. Not, it doesn't have to be. No. Right. And people will have those multiple times a day. They'll be waking up with night sweats, fully soaked. I mean, all those things, so extreme, so uncomfortable, too much. Your body is out of balance, okay? Too much. Um, please comment and chime in about other menopausal symptoms for sure. But you guys get the gist of what I'm saying, that extreme is not necessary. It does not have to be that unbearable. So now that my body is balanced, that my underlying root causes, my gut, my blood sugar, my inflammation, I am getting polyphenols, I am taking fully methylated vitamins. What am I experiencing? Why am I happy and chipper and thinking that perimenopause is like no big thing? It's because um, whoever's like giving us hearts right there just distracted me. Sorry. Hearts, 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 happy, happy. They were, they were so cute and <laughs> explosive. Um, anyway, but so I was telling Tori, like, I just barely, I thought of her. I'm like, oh, I had a little hot flash. Guys, maybe six or seven seconds, and I might not get another one for two or three weeks. Like, no big deal. Are they stopping my day? No. Am I grumpy? Am I tired? Am I, is my sleep interrupted? Am I waking up with night sweats? No, no, no. Like, it's kind of dreamy. It's kind of like, what's the big complaint about right. menopause? It's no big thing. And I will continue to report my experience as I go through this, you know, in the future, because I've been through it before. I've been through horrific menopause before. My period completely stopped. I was completely infertile and we are talking years. So I can relate of what it was like. You know what I mean? And now I'm like, okay, I feel like the clock kind of reversed. I became fertile again. My periods were actually healthy, not painful. I didn't have endometriosis anymore. I had two beautiful children at 39 and 44. And now at 48, almost 49 at the end of this year, I'm beginning these perimen perimenopausal symptoms and they're not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Um, yes, Nicole, it is a crazy difference. Like not that big of a deal at all. And that's how it should be. So are we supposed to avoid any symptoms? No, guys, it's nature telling you your body's changing. Are they deal breakers? Are they showstoppers? Are they uncomfortable? Not a bit, you know? And there's a lot of research on this. You guys can read and hear testimonials from people that talk about menopause and how their body was just transitioning. It's changing. Our bodies changed in puberty. We got a period. We learned what cramps were. We learned what um, emotions were or PMS was like, it's a change as well. It's one that you should exactly. It's part of nature. It's one that we should embrace um, that we can absolutely tolerate and stay super happy and level and even, and not, you know, not, it's not unbearable. So anyway, I think that's the part of the story that Tori wanted me yeah. to kind of bring a little more reality I to you realize that anything that affects your life to the point of, you know, like, like you said, like the hot flashes are so bad that they change, you know, where you're going or wake you up at night or like they affect totally. same thing with me with my cycles. And I've heard this from many women, they have cycles mm -hmm. that are so painful. They can't get out of bed for two days or they're so exhausted during them. They can't work out. Or, um, for me, I had, I had heavy ones, which impacted where I could go, what I could do and had to be away, like close to the bathroom or whatever, yeah. those kind of things that impact your life like that are not normal. Mm-hmm. Nope. And not right. necessary. And it's time to support your body and you just support your body with the nutrients mm -hmm. it needs to be in a more level place. And I was actually thinking while you were talking about this hot flashes that wake you up at night, I wish that I had had a pregnancy on Plexus. Charlie really talked about like having like a test pregnancy and like having their type just because I'm curious <laughs> how much different it'll be because I know from the research now how different it would be. But even those, um, those hot flashes that you have after pregnancy and through nursing as your body is adjusting had I supported my hormones, 
would they have impacted okay. my life so much? I don't think they would have. So, no, right. they wouldn't have. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. I think it'd be funny if you guys did have a test pregnancy. <laughs> so, oh, Nicole says I had a pregnancy on plexus and it was incredible. Um, that's awesome, Nicole. Um, yeah, that's, that is interesting. Just know that like hormones are there for a reason. They're an indicator. All of these symptoms, just like what you just said, Tori, about like the hot flashes of waking up at night. Um, those are just indicators. Your body's just trying to communicate with you. It's no different than the other indicators that have nothing to do with menopause. If menopause is really bad, worse than it should be, it's an indicator. Listen to your body, balance your underlying root causes. If you're a teenager and your acne is really bad, it's a symptom. It's an indicator. So you know, all of these things are just ways that we can listen and talk to our bodies and, and then respond and little tips, you know. Yeah, there's so. also some research that I did that if you if you do need bioidentical hormone replacement therapy someday in life because you choose to, mm -hmm. because you choose that you want mm -hmm. to have those those hormones so that you feel maybe more like you did when you were young, that's okay. But if you mm -hmm. choose to do that, I've, I have read that your blood sugar needs to be balanced first to feel the effects. Fascinating. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you do hormone replace, replacement therapy without balancing your underlying root causes, it is a wild ride trying to find your doses. It is so hard because I know so many people who've gone to really, really great hormone specialists. They're out there and kudos to them. They're amazing. But finding the, the ratios of all the different things and the various kind of like recipe, so right. to speak, per individual is really, really right. hard. You balance your root causes and it's so much easier and it's sustainable and your benefits are exponential. They're bigger, you know, when you're balanced. Yes. So. It's fascinating to me. I love that. As mm -hmm. I age gracefully and <laughs> I have hormone placement therapy, I totally believe in it, but, um, but I'm going to mm -hmm. be balanced to do it. I'm so excited. Yep. Yep. For That's sure. Awesome. Well, good. Thank you for talking about and it. I love it. Tomorrow we'll come back on and I have another topic I want to talk to you about because let's, let's do just it. keep talking. Let's do it. I love it. Our daily Thanks duo. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. See you. Bye.